Uh, so let's talk a little bit about structure, John, uh, in these workshops that you deliver and conversations that and coaching that you've provided, what uh, advice do you have on best practices associated with effectively structuring a story? Yeah, well, this, this is a really interesting question because it, you know, I've given this a lot of thought over the over the years. You know, we've got the story arc and we've got all of this other well documented elements of the story. But I started asking people the question, what is a story? And I just reflect on that for a few minutes and see if you do in a few seconds or this evening. If it pops into your head, just think, you know, what is a story? Try to put a definition around it that's meaningful to you in your in your role. And it's not easy. Mm -hmm. That's really not easy. So I think the first thing I always make sure that people have a definition. You know what you you know what you're going to create. What is it? What is it you're going to create? And every story needs three core elements. You need a character, you need a goal, and you need a challenge. Those are the three elements that you need. Without one of those, the story will crumble. And I've I've witnessed too much focus in the early part of story creation on the challenge. And if you think about that, that kind of doesn't always make the best sense because if you, we've got our character, we've got our, our main character. I use main character instead of heroes, the uh, it's just, it's one and the same, but the main character we know has to go on a journey. We need to take them somewhere. And if we think about this uh, from a movie story perspective, let's think about Liam Neeson, the character, what does he want? He wants his daughter back. What does E.T. want? E.T. wants to go home. So we know the character and then we know the ultimate goal. And then the challenges come after we know those pieces. And I think this is rather than asking people, what are your challenges? What are your challenges? Let's forget that. Let's go to the what do you want the end goal to be? Where do you want to go? And then come back and, and start talking about the challenges. So once we now focus on the main character, a main character in a story, again, it's easy to forget this. But a main character only wants one thing. They don't want two. They don't want five. E.T. wanted to go home. You know, Kevin McAllister wanted his family back. They don't want lots of different things. So keep it, keep it simple. Make sure you know the character, you know what they want, and then you why can't they get it? Make sure stories are person-centric. Make sure it's about a person, uh, less about a brand or less about a company. Keep it simple and understand that you. In a 60 minute or 90 minute session, you will have multiple stories. You wouldn't create one overarching story for that, that, uh, that duration. That would be incredibly difficult to do, but you will have multiple stories. And ideally, the multiple stories will roll up to an overarching theme or armature, and they all link, link together, ideally. But simplicity and the final word is make sure the story that you're creating and telling is relatable to the person that's listening. Yes. Yes. Oh gosh. Such great advice. And I, uh, the point you made about ensuring it's one thing that that goal is very clear and it's centered around one thing I think is yeah. so important because one of the challenges I see a lot of people get into, especially when trying to use storytelling effectively in a business environment is making it too long mm. and overly complex. So I love your emphasis on simplicity. And while you say, incorporating that challenge is important because you want that tension yeah. to draw your audience in. You don't lead with that. You have to provide that context first to make that end goal clear. Thank you. Uh, Bay. anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I do. I want to emphasize that because listening to what um, uh, John was saying, I kind of like put this structure uh, onto the example I just gave. I was thinking, yeah, that was back then without knowing the structure. Um, what, what I also want to reflect on is the the relatable part, because now I think um, you really need to um, create this. That's what I did in the past with always effective communication, that you really need to um, make the audience feel like they are relatable to this. So um, nowadays also at school, we, we started to uh, emphasize more and more about empathy, uh, mm -hmm. empathy, uh, empathic thinking in, 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 in many things. So I think here that's where the the power of the storytelling. And again, we all are a storyteller. So mm -hmm. it's about unleash this uh, um, hidden power. Terrific. Well said. And I love the the po point about empathy and making it audience centric. 
Okay, so that's great advice on how to structure the story, the elements that are essential to include the importance of simplicity. What about actually telling it? What tips do you have for delivering your story in a way that's really compelling and engaging? Um, should I just jump sure. in? Yeah, yeah, because um, Carrie, when you met me um, during that session, uh, I just want to share with, because I'm also looking at the audience, uh, we have audience from all over the world. Um, that's really nice um, because when I before I started that keynote at the uh, Women uh, in Technology conference, I actually prepared a different um, speech. Um, but then before I start, I think probably remembered, I, I look at the audience and I ask a few questions. And then I found out, okay, they have uh, the, the audience is different than what I prepared for. So I changed immediately my speech, um, which I think I'm, I was very happy I did that because um, maybe that is a big conference. Maybe there is a bigger plan to kind of attract potential investor, but because the room full of audience, they are young students or young girls that they are really curious about how this technology is going to be. So I think he, it's again, audience centric. So mm -hmm. when you tell a story and probably before that, you just double check that whom you are talking to so that you can bring the right story because I'm sure that story have like all kind of form, but also even a, a, a narrative, you yeah. can bring it into a different story for different audiences. Wonderful, wonderful. That's not something everyone's able to do, Bay, <laughs> on a stage with a big audience to on the spot completely change your story. So I love the point about how important it is to know your audience and, and doing as much of that audience analysis up front as you possibly can. Uh, John, what, what would you add? Yeah, so I, th I would I would add really these are sort of very straightforward things that uh, that I use and I recommend to during every session is the first thing you write the story down. If you write it with a pen as well, you process that information at a much deeper level and learn it. It's the same as a joke. Most people believe they are not very good joke tellers, but when was the last time you locked yourself in a room and learned to deliver a joke perfectly? You, we don't do that, therefore we don't really remember them. So learn the story. Then deliver it with your body and not just the words. I've got a video that I, I share with people in, in some of the sessions uh, where a story is being told where the person is just rigid and there's no movement whatsoever. And it's very, very distracting, very distracting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we know that even our early languages may well have been sign languages and not, uh, not, not spoken. And we know that we can communicate our, our wants and desires from a very early age. Both of our children went through baby sign languages. So, so they could, even before they could speak, they could communicate what they wanted. So it's very, very natural. And there's a wonderful book called The Extended Mind, where it talks about gestural foreshadowing and how much information we pass with our, with our hands. It's not just about bookending something or emphasizing our hands normally arrive at a word before it comes out of our mouth. So make sure that you, you write it down, you learn it, you rehearse it, you're not rigid and just let your body tell the story as, as well as the words coming out of your mouth. 